Good afternoon, everybody. Ready for the next session? I hope you enjoy your lunch. Um, I'm here with Francisco Senra. I'm Stefan Dörr. We have the pleasure of convening the session this afternoon. We've got some great speakers. Um, just a, a short notification. There's a swap between speakers. So just so you know, um, Raul Quiles, who is the third from the bottom, is moving two up and will we'll talk instead of uh, Martin Galliana. So those two have swapped, just so you know. But it's only one session now. Everybody can be here, so there's no, shing, no rushing around between one and the other. So with that, I come straight into it. If I can ask Eric uh, Riglo and uh, Bernard Lambert, or uh, Eric, to present their, both their presentations. The presentation is from southern France. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my speech will be uh, pretty much in the continuity of uh, the presentation of uh, uh, Antonella Masayo yesterday morning uh, about the, the French experience uh, on prescribed burning. Uh, I have to thank my co-author Bernard Lambert, uh, who is uh, the, the leader of uh, the French network on prescribed burning and also one uh, of the most uh, ancient uh, user of fire in France since the mid-80s. Okay. Well, prescribed burning has been uh, developed in France for uh, more than 25 years. Uh, it started in the mid-80s and uh, it has uh, grown up since uh, covering most of the south uh, territory of France. Um, it's, it has been well structured under the umbrella of uh, the a working group gathering all the partners involved in uh, prescribed burning in France, researchers, uh, managers, and uh, all, the, all, the, all the partners, including the firefighters. And uh, this uh, prescribed burning national working group has set up uh, all the, the, um, the structure and uh, the condition for the development, including uh, changing the lay, the law, so that uh, uh, it is possible to, to have specialized team doing prescribed burning. So we have a, a great institutional recognition uh, through dedicated uh, legislations on local regulations and also a specific, a specific training. And every year, we have uh, new fire bosses and uh, uh, crew members that are, that are trained. But uh, even with all these uh, positive factors, uh, we have to admit that uh, there is a stagnation of uh, the prescribed burning area uh, since almost uh, uh, 10 years. Uh, on this plot, you can see that uh, the total area burnt annually in France is in between uh, 3,500 and 4,000 hectares, and uh, it doesn't grow. So the objective um, of my presentation is to try to identify the constraints that uh, lead to this uh, fact, and uh, why the, the practice cannot develop more and what would be the possible levers for further uh, development of the activity. So we, we have a clear view, a clear picture of uh, the fire prescribed burning development uh, through uh, an historical database uh, uh, that has been maintained by uh, the prescribed burning uh, national working group. Uh, and we did an analysis of uh, a set of indicators, quantitative indicators, like total area burn, number of uh, prescribed burning operations. Uh, but also, in addition, we did a survey among the 23 team leaders uh, to identify the, their personal constraints and their feeling about uh, this situation and to identify the, the possible levers. So um, as you can see on this map, we have uh, more or less 25 uh, teams covering pretty well the territory, the southern territory, the one that is subject to, to wildfire. We need, we need a fire prevention through prescribed burning. 
but uh, every year we have more or less one, one quarter of, uh, of the teams that are sleeping teams. I mean, they don't burn at all. Uh, they are uh, institutionally recognized as a team, but they don't burn, and uh, we, we have to understand this situation. Uh, last prescribed burning season, there were seven teams uh, not burning. So uh, they should have several constraints to, to explain this situation. Uh, if we look at uh, the first uh, quantitative in indicator, the response rate, the response rate is uh, uh, the ratio between uh, what has been planned by the, by the team, uh, accumulating all uh, the, the area to be burned in the different uh, prescribed burning plans uh, among, the, among the season, and what is really done, and the, the, the ratio is only uh, half of it. Uh, that means that uh, there is a potential. Uh, this is not the limitation, is not uh, the potential uh, area to be burnt. It is planned, but it is not realized at the end. And we have to explain this situation. Uh, the second uh, uh, quantitative indicator is a number of uh, yearly operations uh, that is performed with prescribed burning, we can see that we have a high annual variation, supposedly uh, due to uh, weather conditions, which are very variable, uh, too much drought or too much uh, humidity, depends on uh, the situation, the location of the year. Um, so uh, we have an exception, uh, a very peculiar year in uh, 2014, that was uh, in the uh, western region of France, in Aquitaine, we had very severe flood and uh, accumulated dead material had to be burned, so it is very specific. Now if we look at uh, the mean operation size, uh, we can observe that it is progressively decreasing over the year, starting from uh, a mean of uh, 18 hectares per year and down to um, nowadays uh, frequently below 10 hectares a year. Um, well, this is mostly due to, we will see that, uh, environmental constraints, uh, but um, also uh, it is uh, um, easier to control the severity of the burning uh, inside the plot when the, the, the plot is small. So it's also, also a sign of uh, higher quality in, uh, the, in the burning, in the burning uh, uh, realization. And now let's see some uh, results of, of the survey uh, carried out among the, the PB team leaders. Uh, well, the first uh, constraint to be identified was meteorological uh, conditions, as uh, already mentioned. But uh, the second one, uh, very much uh, underlined by uh, the team leader, was the an availability of, of the staff and. Uh, of the team leaders, but also of uh, the, the crew members. And uh, this is quite a problem because uh, this uh, low availability uh, makes that the, they, they could miss uh, some good uh, windows, uh, uh, windows possibility, weather conditions. And um, another f aspect is uh, the lack of P buses uh, in some region and of crew members in order so uh, the, we should uh, reorganize a little bit the special distributions of the trainees among uh, the territory. Uh, the organization of the teams is, is also a problem uh, for some reason. Uh, there is a, a real lack of uh, flexibility, uh, especially when teams are multiple agencies team. When it's in the same team you have uh, firefighters and foresters, it is difficult to get the flexibility to work together and to be ready for burning when the weather is good. Uh, another uh, challenge is uh, to reduce uh, the procedure to uh, prepare the, the prescribed burning season planning. This is somewhat cumbersome and uh, a lot of energy uh, uh, is lost that could be used to burn, uh, to, to realize the burning themselves. Uh, of course, uh, environmental constraints are getting uh, uh, more and more important, uh, with uh, a, a consequence uh, already mentioned of the diminution on, on the smaller PB, uh, prescribing sizes, and uh, also uh, 
the uh, air quality uh, constraint, which is getting more and more important, even if by law in France, uh, prescribed burning team have a derogation so far. Uh, we also have some uh, sociological constraints uh, and which, because of the public and the institution are, are very concerned about the, the fire's effects on the ecosystem and they, we should give more information about the differences between the effects of the prescribed burning and the effects of the wildfires. Uh, now, discussion about the possible levers. Uh, well, uh, response is not unique, and uh, we have to, to go through uh, specific uh, cases. But as a general recommendation, we need more flexibility in the organization of, uh, uh, the, the, of the operation so that to fit with the, well with the demand. Um, and we have to, if possible, have uh, dedicated uh, fire bosses to, 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 to the techniques uh, because uh, this is really a limitation. Uh, also, standardization of cost assessment methods uh, to better analyze the benefits and constraints of prescribed burning towards uh, other fuel treatments uh, method. So the, the comparison be between fuel treatments near more loaded about uh, uh, the efficiency of prescribed burning in some situation and the low cost it may include. So uh, for further uh, levers uh, discussion, we need to distinguish the two domains, the forest domain and the rangeland uh, domain. In the forest domain, most of our burnings are done in the state forest and in communal forests. Uh, whereas uh, the private uh, owners are more than, uh, uh, cover more than 70% uh, of the territory. So we have a problem. Uh, how, to, how to develop um, more prescribed burning in the private uh, forest, this is a challenge. Well, we should raise uh, private owners' uh, awareness uh, through uh, the existing uh, professional networks on, on they are efficient. We should organize some training and demonstration. And also, uh, when technically possible, we should uh, propose to uh, the forest owners the self-protection of uh, their forest, or at least the high-value forest stands, uh, by using a proper fire regime that could uh, enable a, a wildfire to, uh, to pass through without killing trees. But uh, we still need uh, public funding to do so because uh, in the Mediterranean context, uh, uh, private owners have no money to pay for the prescribed burning. Uh, in the range and management uh, area, the situation is quite different. A recent uh, recognition of, uh, uh, by the authority, by the French authority, to uh, the need uh, uh, of using fire by the uh, rural population to manage their resources uh, has been really uh, admitted and uh, now, namely in the Pyrenees uh, chain, mountains, uh, a decisive pathway was uh, uh, carried out before uh, and now we have a lot of tools that are in favor of the development of prescribed burning uh, with uh, the, the participation of the local population. So the first one, the, the key uh, decision was to uh, organize a local fire community uh, with all the partners uh, and there are discussions be before the season of the, the best fire plan to, to implement. The, 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 the prescribed burning teams are uh, offering uh, trainings to the communities and uh, also the, the regulation has been uh, simplified, it is more flexible and uh, we even have a declaration of the burning online on the official site of the administration. So this was a great step and uh, it makes uh, us uh, saying that there is important progress that, that is, has been uh, performed uh, in the last uh, uh, decade. Uh, in a higher quality in prescribed burning practice, practice, better support of uh, the, the authorities or the um, prescribed burning teams to the traditional burning uh, and that would uh, imply that a, pu a pure quantitative uh, assessment of uh, the area burnt is not the right way to assess uh, the efficiency of prescribed burning teams because now they are supporting uh, the rural population and is, this is not uh, uh, quanti quantifying in, in, uh, uh, in area burnt. And, uh, 
we still have uh, some problems to be solved with uh, a, develop, a development of prescribed burning in all the sectors uh, of the demand, including uh, the private owners, and also to better recognize uh, inside the agency that the prescribed burning buses should be fully dedicated to, to the techniques. And if possible, export the Pyrenean experience, the so-called Pyrenean experience of supporting the traditional practice, which is an imp important lever uh, for the use of fire in the rural and in the forest environment. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Eric. Maybe one very quick question before we move on to the next speaker. Thank you. My question is, are the private landowners allowed to burn their own land by themselves? And what is the permit that is required? Yes, uh, the French law uh, only uh, authorizes uh, uh, to, to set fire by the owner of the land. And uh, the change we had in uh, 2000 in the new forestry law was to permit uh, to the prescribed burning uh, specialized team to do it. Uh, for uh, the owners uh, with the authorization of the owner. So this is a great step uh, to have the possibility to burn with specialist team by now. Thank you.